There are only some situations where too much training volume seems to impact gains negatively. Hey, everybody, I thought I would chat with you guys and gals a little bit about this today. You know, and this is going to be a topic of, of nuance because I, I think some people have noticed that while I'll make videos discussing that, hey, in a lot of cases, a lot of too much volume can negatively affect your gains. They'll also say, but we've seen you do really high volume phases. You have clients, a couple of clients who have done insane volumes when we look at their their vlogs and stuff um, but then you have others who do very low so could you explain it a little bit and, and i think this is a topic worth discussing uh, because i, I want to be clear i don't buy in fully buy into the nonsense that uh, even when it's evidence-based that doing ex a lot of training volume per se particularly on, on higher rep stuff is going to affect your gains negatively yeah we could we could have discussions about not being recovered session to session but that really only becomes a situation when you're trying to train the same muscles directly multiple times a week or squatting two or three times a week those sort of things uh, and uh, people are like but you had clients who did tons of volume you cut it back and they started making gains it's like yeah and there's a couple of situations to where it can be a problem all right Number one, the obvious one would be the hard gainer. The hard gainer who is not able to eat enough, uh, keeping in mind, look at the research we do have now on training, uh, fat loss, all of that stuff. You do burn a ton of calories lifting, okay? And if you're doing endless amounts of sets, all right, like I had a client who stalled and I took him down to 10 sets for chest a week. Uh, he was doing like almost 30 sets of chest a week and stuck as a basically a mid-novice. Suck is a mid-novice. All right, now there was some other stuff going on with that client medically that we found out about later. Uh, even when I'd mentioned that in that video, so we didn't have all that info yet that have been corrected and that's helped. And we've slowly increased his volume a little bit above the 10 sets. But you have those cases where it really is a calorie burn thing though. Okay, it really is a calorie burn thing. If someone is really struggling to eat enough food, yeah, it can interfere, especially if they're losing weight. Okay, if they're forced into a cut because they're doing so much training, um, yeah, they're going to gain less muscle. Yes, their gains are going to go slower. Now, will their body composition improve? So we're getting into the question, are they trying to maximize muscle growth or are we trying to just get amazing body composition? Because they're not always the same. Because if you can recomp it all, really, that's that's good too. If a person's pursuit is body composition and they end up making very small amounts of muscle growth while losing fat, well, that is going towards their progress goal. They may not be maximizing muscle growth. They might be able to double or triple the amount of muscle they're gaining though. Okay, but their gains are going to come super slow. They're still gains. So that's a situation. Okay, but if you're the skinny novice, this is really, this could potentially a problem unless you're willing to live with, hey, it's going to take me a couple years to put on any real muscle this way. And in which case that, that will be fine. Okay, that'll be fine. Uh, the other situations are when we're basically shortchanging our early sets. In other words, if you're if you're coming in and you're doing 20 plus sets for a muscle per week and you are goofing off in the early sets because you're holding back. Uh, I honestly feel this is a bad use of training time you're potentially going to make less gains because you're, you're just creating a bunch of fatigue at that point without even getting the best muscle stimulus. Especially if the early sets, like you're not, we're not going hard on the first five sets for a muscle at all. We're over five reps from failure on everything. All right, that's a problem. And that's the thing I ran into when I was doing, doing certain stuff and I was messing with the 20 to 40 sets a week for a little while. It was definitely an issue. But what happens if we, we change that and we train in a way to where we do do big compounds early, hard, heavy weight, and then we do tons of pump work? Well, I don't think that's going to create that same scenario. In fact, if anything, that, that could be extremely good for, for body composition. 
Okay, have so someone who's recomping. I think we could absolutely make the case for training in that manner, right? Just make sure your your first movements are, are big, bigger movements where we're training hard and then any of the early stuff that we're going very, very close to failure, not holding back. Okay, I see that set right there. If every set you do looks like that set of preacher curls, I don't think ultra high volumes are gonna be a problem for you. Other than your performance, you're gonna be really weak on those later sets. Oh no, you'd only be able to do flies with a 30 pound dumbbell. You'd be curling 25s, okay. But is that acceptable if they're limit sets? I think it's perfectly reasonable. And again, particularly if you're not necessarily trying to gain weight at that point, I, I think it's fine. Okay. The volumes become a problem though when they interfere with recovery. And, and I think our biggest fears there are with the big exercises and heavy work. That's where we really see an overtraining situation is when we do try to do too much heavy, heavy work. In other words, you're squatting for sets of five. Hey, I promise you, you don't want to do 15 or 20 sets of that a week. This is going to be a problem. This will beat you into the ground. So your big, heavy exercises that load the joints up heavy, no, you can't handle a bunch of volume of those. But could you do two or three sets of heavy squats a week and this do tons of leg presses and leg extensions? Could you come in and do another 20 sets of those? Yeah, I think that's perfectly fair as long as they're reasonably hard sets. I don't think people are going to have a serious training problem from that. It really is the too much heavy work that beats us up. But as far as even the light work goes, it really is just an issue when it's junk volume early on. Now, I will say, though, again, kid doing lots and lots of, of lighter pump work after the real work or potentially through the week to some extent, could that be fine? I think that's fine. I don't think that's going to interfere I don't think that's going to interfere with your training. And it could be a case of, well, we know we're getting great stimulus at that point. Um, someone chasing body composition, growing it out, right? Doing a low-fat chicken, broccoli, brown rice diet. Uh, I think it's perfectly fine. I think they'll probably get a pretty good physique training in that manner and eating in that manner. All right, guys. So that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I'll talk to you guys and gals next time.